Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and welcome to another edition of Toys R Us Talks Toys. This is my third podcast and once again thank you to everybody for all the real positive feedback. As I say in all of these videos, any feedback is welcome, even some negative, even some obviously constructive because it always helps. But again, thank you everybody for the support with regard to these. So quite a few things to go through with you today. Uh, some of the things again that I've seen this week, some things I'm really interested in, some of the things I'm looking forward to, etc. And of course, one of the biggest things that I'm looking forward to is in fact PulseCon. So I've obviously decided to do a watch along with that. So as soon as I get an idea of the exact time that it's the Transformers section, um, because A, it's Friday, I'm quite busy anyway, and in all honesty, I've got no interest in going live, uh, when um, they're doing G.I. Joe and everything else. As I say, this is the Transformers channel, and that's my passion, and that's what I want to see. So it'll be great for as many of you if you want to jump in, obviously, with the chat regarding that and of course see studio series 86 devastator we know it's going to happen we don't know how much of it's going to be revealed we don't know if it's one or two figures um, i'm imagining from the way that the designers talked about it during the interview that i did with them that we are going to get to see the entire product because that's as i say the consensus that i got that they were looking to do full reveals of the full combiner um, and i think it's going to be better that way because exactly that they can just get it straight out there we can have a look because obviously Devastator is going to be six figures and the other combiners obviously are five figures it gives us a better idea on how to budget because you know not all of us can afford every single figure um, and not all everyone wants every single figure so you know if it's on the top of your list you'll be able to see it and hopefully as I say because it's going to be released over a six month sort of period that's what they were looking at um, all of this by the way if you're wondering where I'm getting this information from if you're new to the channel or if you haven't had a chance to check out my latest interview with the designers it was last month um, it is all on there everything that I'm saying it's not hearsay it's not me making stuff up um, it's all said by the designers themselves so cannot wait for PulseCon that is something that I think is going to be fantastic staying talking with Hasbro now this is again just I suppose a, an opportunity to say thanks to them not just for me just for I think the whole community at the moment and I just think that the way that everything is going and as I said not just with myself with everybody I'm so pleased to see um, that other people are getting involved as I say Sixo's just got another interview with Evan Brooks sorry it's his first interview with Evan Brooks but it's another interview with Hasbro designers he's also got a set of figures to give away Rodimus Primal got to reveal obviously Elite One last week myself um, few and a couple of others got to uh, reveal obviously the studio series one bumblebee figure it's a great honor it's a great privilege um and in sometimes you know i've got to pinch myself that this is all real i have to take my hat off to few he did it amazingly um, i think we we're all given the same brief um i obviously went with i suppose the sort of more sensible not that his wasn't any good i'm going to comment out in a second more sensible sort of youtube reveal he did an amazing um very quick uh, short real for instagram and it just worked it was amazing and it was so good to see that he was involved with it as well and as i say that's why i just think at the moment it's just such a great and there's a few other people as well who i didn't perhaps know um, and weren't aware of it's you know it's nice to be involved with these sort of things that's happening and not just even though the websites are great and i always refer to them again i refer to tfw 2005 and t formers etc and all the other ones all the other ones that we use it just feels nice to be part of something and again a lot of that is down to you guys because of you guys i get you know watches subscribers etc and again huge huge thanks to hasbro for the involvement that we're getting and i'm saying we because it is we because there's obviously the youtube community there's the reviewer community out there and we're getting these fantastic opportunities and it's i just wanted to say you know how cool it is of course of course it's cool to be, it's really interesting exciting to be part of these there's loads more things that i've got in the pipeline for obvious reasons i cannot discuss any of them with you um but you'll be seeing some stuff hopefully by the end of the weekend with regards to things like that but again it, it was great to see people like the you uh, you know not just american youtubers they're great as well of course they are i speak to them but you know uk guys because we are quite small compared to the american um contingent which is great so really really pleased with that and long may it continue so that was really really good as well right i want to now move on to a couple of things that i think that i need to sort of address not that they're negative or just i suppose to reiterate to people one of them i did have written way way down but i might come to it in a second so the first was of course legacy menasaur mine in question the amount of people who have put comments 
that I've put the legs the wrong way around in the short with Optimus Prime. I know, I do know that I put the legs the wrong way around. The reason why I wanted to do this and the fact the reason that I have done this and more ironically as well, a couple of people commented that they didn't buy it because they didn't know that you could do this is purely because guys if you google if you have a look at the generation one menasaur toy excuse for the noise in the background if you have a look at the generation one menasaur figure that's the way it is that's the way the toys are the cars are on the front they are on the shins and although it's not a hundred percent animation accurate it just makes the figure look better. There's nothing wrong with Legacy Menasaur. It is fantastic. It is one of my figures of the year. Obviously it was, sorry, it's one of my figures of the decade. It's sensational. It is very animation accurate, but from the front is a display piece on a shelf with just the gray legs. It's, for me, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as rotating the legs, having the cars on the front, and then getting that you know funny nostalgic feeling inside of just looking at something that i loved so much as a kid um enhanced doubled tripled in size and exactly that just for the nostalgic hit factor so for all the people who keep commenting and saying you've got the legs the wrong way around and then for the people again who didn't even realize that you could do that i'm glad that i did that video because obviously from now they, they might go back and they might go and buy it or they might do it to their own. As I say, it was so nice reading some of the comments, but I felt that I had to address that as well. Now, that, that was point, the next point today, and I'm going to jump to one of the later points that I've got in here. And that's purely because it's going to be exactly what I'm just talking about. I've just put Jinrai up as the uh, figure for the, the A to Z. Now, I know there's going to be loads of people telling me, so I'm going to try and preempt that. And I'm going to ask you guys as well, because I... I'm doing my absolute best to keep up with all the comments, but as the subscription number goes up, it's getting increasingly hard to reply to every single message, which I do pride myself on. Um, and I love the fact that I've been able to do that and keep up with it as well as everything else that's going on in my normal life, my home life, my work life, etc. But I'm going to get loads of people saying that's not Jinrai, that's Power, that's Q. And as I say, anybody who knows the Japanese continuity will obviously understand why it's Jinrai. You'll also perhaps notice that it's different. It's got a silver back chrome rather than just the standard Hasbro colour. So any help from anybody who sees the comments first and foremost, if you could just, again, just politely guide them or just politely say, no, it's Jinrai. And again, there's, I wanted to take this opportunity on this podcast just to reiterate to anybody who's not seen it to watch Super God Master Force because it's so good. And of course... Um, it's too difficult to go into in a, in a 20 minute podcast how, um, you know, the difference between Jin Rai, Super Jin Rai, etc. But the reason why I want to talk about it especially is obviously to do with the masterpiece as well. It's one of my now high, most highly anticipated figures um, for next year. I think we're not going to get it this year, but exactly that. It is God Jin Rai. I didn't even realize it was called Apex Armor. Uh, that's obviously the westernized name for it. Even if you just type in, I've got a scene. In fact, I'll ask you guys' opinion. I've got a scene. It's where he first merges to make God Jinrai. But I don't know if I put it up, if I've run the risk of copyright. There's countless other people who've got this particular scene on their own YouTube channel. Whether or not they've got a copyright strike, I don't know. Um, I'd love, as I say, to, to be able to put up more of, of, of the cartoon of that, but I just don't want to run the risk. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is reiterate to people to have a nose at Super God Master Force. If you haven't got time like me to watch them, just go to TF Wiki and just get a, bit, a little bit of an understanding because I know that there's going to be loads of comeback. It's not, you know, it's not Jinrai, it's not Super Jinrai, it's Power Master Optimus Prime, etc. But there is obviously a difference. And hopefully you'll see as well the reason why I do these A to Zs is that there's an actual difference in the toys. Um, so as I said, he's got chrome on the back. When it comes to Super Jinrai, or just a normal Jinrai figure, um, for those of you who don't know, obviously Power Master Optimus Prime was the Hasbro version. That was a completely plastic cab. Uh, the Takara version, so Jinrai and Super Jinrai, and in fact, I'm just gonna do a video review of Super Jinrai, um, was metal. It was a metal cab, same as the original um, 1984 Optimus Prime. Difference in the windows, difference in the smokestacks, different in the paint apps, and of course, as I say, metal. So um, there's quite a bit of a difference. So basically what I'm asking is, 
I suppose a little bit of education for the people who don't really know too much about it, but on the same hand as well, uh, asking for a little bit of help from you guys. If, if you could, if you beat any of the people to the comments, just sort of say, no, it's not, <laughs> it's not Q, it's Jin Rai. That would definitely help me out um, a little bit. Uh, talking of, I suppose, figures with slightly different colors, etc. So, so pleased to wake up this morning to see the reissue bombshell. Um, this again is probably going to split a few or divide a few fans because obviously they've gone with the greyish gunmetal grey colour of the chest. I'm really pleased first and foremost because I thought this toy line had pretty much died. I thought that they looked at it like some of the other capsules, like I mentioned again in the interview, like your Toxitron, etc, etc, that perhaps it had run its course, um, it wasn't selling very well. This is me speculating, by the way. Um, in the UK, you can help me around the rest of the world, guys, with your comments. In the UK, a lot of the retro reissues have been shelf warming, have been heavily, heavily discounted. When I was at the MCM with um, in demand toys they had so many at like you know half the price etc so I just personally thought that it wasn't doing very very well I thought perhaps it was too much of a niche um because some people a lot of people would like the generation one reissue figures but they want the original colors so I was thinking that perhaps maybe the the you know the movie colors of the cartoon colors was too niche because if you look because you wouldn't want them if you were just trying to collect generation one figures because it's a different color you wouldn't want them so i totally appreciate that uh, but as i said really really pleased to see the fact that we've got him and not only him we've got ramhorn as well now of course and everybody's going why ramhorn why ramhorn and i totally get that why ramhorn i think personally again to bolster out the product you're getting the six energon cubes as well which is great some people have didn't realize you're getting the energon cubes as well but you are the energon cubes are still part of it um to bolster out the pack to make it more value for money for perhaps maybe the reasons that it wasn't selling too well but also i think what they've cleverly cleverly done is that now means that they could release an eject rewind buzzer and laser beak as a four pack that's that's sort of my thinking. I don't know what you're thinking as well, guys. Oh no, maybe not Laserbeak, because Laserbeak already came with Soundwave. I'm thinking perhaps Buzzor, um, Ratbat. Buzzor, Ratbat, Rewind. I think that's what, I don't know. Speculation, completely speculation, but it just seems, again, more cost-effective, more a better idea to get four tapes out in a cassette pack and then put Ramhorn, as they have done. The Ramhorn is with Bombshell. As soon as I can find out where you can pre-order it from, um, I'll let you guys know. I know it's going to be a Walmart exclusive in the US. That usually means that Robot Recruits and In Demand and perhaps a couple of other online stores in the UK uh, can get hold of them. But as always, I will let you know. So it was great to see that, as I say, because I really thought that the toy line wasn't going to um, continue or to flourish, shall we say. Fingers crossed I'll get my animated colours Astro. That's all I'm holding out for. Animated colours Astro Train. I'm lucky enough to have the animated colours Galvatron. Astro Train's the big one for me, guys. That's the one that I really want. In fact, I put it over to you. What is the most... If you could have one right now, what would it be? Animated colours what? And it doesn't matter if they've got the moulds, etc. Any figure you wanted the animated colours from the 86 movie. So you can't say Scorponok, which would be my top choice. But he's not in the movie, obviously. So Astro Train will do very very nicely and i suppose i can segue now on to well staying with insecticons really pleased to see dr Wu insecticons and i love the fact again that they've just gone completely random so you're getting the datsun brothers with the insecticons and at the moment we're only getting the traditional colors so what i mean by that is smoke screen in traditional colors and then the insecticons in traditional colors i would not be surprised if we didn't get um some slightly different ones because Obviously, we know that the Insecticons have the Diaclone colours, which, of course, are the e-hobby colours as well. Um, you can check the videos out of that on this channel as well if you wanted to. Uh, but really pleased to see that Dr. Wu are doing that. Um, I just I think that Dr. Wu is great. And as I say, the more that they do with that, the more that I hope that the, the proper powers that be, Takara, etc., see that how well they're doing, see that there's a genuine market for them. And indeed, you know, to grab it by the skin of the teeth, whatever. Maybe even go to Dr. Wu them. So I don't know how businesses work with regards to that. I've got no idea. But, you know, if all the hard work's done for you, have a word with Dr. Wu, collaborate and say, right, if you're going to keep ripping us off, then let's work together. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know how it works, but I would, I would love to see that. I've said numerous occasions, constantly, constantly. I know most people listening to the channel have probably had enough of me saying it now, but how cool would it be if they were official 
Transformers, Takara, little Micromaster figures, and as I said, you know, they, they could come packaged as the two like they do now. They could come packaged in individual boxes, so they could then break into America, into the UK as them pocket money type figures. I just think that that would be uh, really, really good um, as well. I think that'd be so, so good. Right, talking of things that are so good, what I'm going to do now is talk very quickly about figures that I'm lucky enough to have in hand. Um, and what they're like and then the next part the final part is going to be things I'm really looking forward to so Farak blew my mind absolutely blew my mind at how good that figure is now yes it's a Cyclonus read mold yes we've already got two Cyclonuses we're gonna have two Metal Hawks and of course we've got Farak I have no affiliation for the Farak character I have read no literature with regards to Farak the only time that I first found out about him was because I was lent the Magic Square version of that figure, which was not very good at all, uh, by a subscriber to do a full review on. However, this particular version, like I said in the review, guys, how they've managed to make that Cyclonus mold better is beyond me. The head sculpt is sensational. The addition of the, the ability of being able to put the additional two guns either side of the, um, of the wings is incredible. Uh, the new nose cone, the new, you know, I suppose boosters, thrusters, whatever they are, air vents on the wings, etc. They're stunning. Um, the, as I say, with regards to, to all of the Star Raiders, I know they're just retools, redecos of existing figures, uh, but this one is by far the, my, my absolute favourite. I've still got to do Filch and Thundertron. I've done the transformation processes, but again, it's just sitting down, having the time to get the reviews done. I will get them done this week. Um, you're going to get inundated, unfortunately, with reviews because I've got third parties coming out of my ears to catch up with as well that people have lent me and I need to get them sent back to them because they've been sitting on my bedroom floor for ages. Uh, so, yeah, so I just wanted to reiterate that, guys. If, you get, if you've got the opportunity to get hold of any of the Star Raiders, um, they're better than the originals, which is crazy to say that. So um, it's worthwhile having a nose. Um, and again, I need to re read up and catch up on the literature regarding them so moving on to things that i'm looking forward to apart from the pulse con which i've already touched on um, and apart from the things that i can't tell you which i briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video it's got to be combiners it's got to be the leaked listing it's pretty much leaked isn't it of the vortex i'm sure you've seen that if you haven't read that video seen the video then i'm sure you've perhaps seen now there's no pictures unfortunately and i know this is just a podcast so there's no pictures there's just been a listing found for vortex next year uh which i think the reason why the significance of this is we had a leaked listing of swindle for data for, as well with earlier this year for next year as well so these products are all coming out next year but we had a leaked listing for swindle now everybody was yeah, exactly that. Discussing, contemplating, wondering, whichever word you want to use. Will it be the animated swindle, um, etc.? Because we didn't know, because it was just what it was, Generations um, Swindle. So, we, And of course, they've done animated Motormaster, etc., etc. Um, I think now with the fact that Detective JT Prime has found the listing for the Vortex um, on his computer system. So for those of you who are unaware with what these listings find these listings mean so what these basically are they're listings for actual products and if you remember the design team say that you know they're always at least two years um in front of what we're actually seeing so obviously they need to be exactly that they need to be well and truly in front so when these products leaks are, are listed exactly that you know they could have physical they, they could actually have the product in hand so it, it's and the most important thing with this is since I've been doing this channel over such a short period of time, and I said this very briefly in the video, that I don't think that JT Prime, to my knowledge, and if I'm wrong, and if anybody's got any proof or of this, please do let me know. But since I've been doing this YouTube channel, since I've been doing the news updates on the leaks, on the listings, he's got nothing wrong. Um, I, we, nobody knows who he works for. He, he's just known as JT Prime. So what I mean by this is he will literally find the full toy line um, for the figures, he's already done it. We already know what Studio Series figures are coming out for most of next year. Again, you can check the video of that out on here. No images of actual products, just videos of the listings of the figures that he's found. So that's what I was going to say. He's never, I don't want to say let us down, like I know him, I don't know who he is. But every single listing he's found um, has always come to fruition. So for me, that definitely says it's, it's coming. It's got to be coming. We've, they've already discussed 
Um, again, they're looking at doing new combiners, updating combiners. So for me, I'm really excited to see what a Bruticus could look like now. The Combiner Wars was okay. The Generation 1 beat that, in my opinion. But the reason, and I think the significance for Bruticus is because they will use that mold over and over. Ruination, Battle Gaia, uh, the, the Walmart exclusive and the camo colours, etc, etc. So I really can see that mold getting a hammering so i'm really excited for that but there you go guys managed to get it all in the 20 minutes again it's been great i suppose just reeling all this off the top of my head huge thanks for the support let me know in the comments what you think take care